In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, we gather now on this first Sunday of Lent. And today we enter with the Lord Jesus into the desert, where he showed us the way to overcome temptation and sin in our lives. As we continue now our Lenten journey, may we persevere in our desire to draw ever closer to the Lord and to know his great love and mercy. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And you intercede for us always at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God formed man out of clay of the ground and blew into his nostrils the breath of life, and so man became a living being. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east and placed there the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground, the Lord God made various trees grow that were delightful to look at and good for food with the tree of life in the middle of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now the servant was the most cunning of all the animals that the Lord God had made. The serpent asked the woman, did God really tell you not to eat from any of the trees in the garden? And the woman answered the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. It is only about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden that God said, you shall not eat it or even touch it, lest you die. But the servant said to the woman, you certainly will not die. No, God knows well that the moment you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God's who know what is good and what is evil. The woman saw the tree was good for food, pleasing to the eyes, and desirable for gaining wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked. So they, so, so they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin cleanse me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. For I acknowledge my offense, and my sin is always before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man, sin entered the world, and through sin, death. And thus, death came to all men, inasmuch as all sinned. For if by the transgression of the one, death came to reign through that one, how much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of justification come to reign in life through the one Jesus Christ? In conclusion, just as through one transgression 
condemnation came upon all. So, through the one righteous act, acquittal and life came to all. For just as through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners, so through the obedience of the one, the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was hungry. The tempter approached and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become loaves of bread. He said in reply, It is written, One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and made him stand on the parapet of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, Again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Then the devil took him up to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their magnificence. And he said to him, All these I shall give to you if you will prostrate yourself and worship me. At this, Jesus said to him, Get away, Satan. It is written, The Lord your God shall you worship, and him alone shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As human beings, it's natural for us to be curious about things that are forbidden to us. When we are told we can't do something, it becomes even more appealing to us. We might have already experienced this during these first few days of Lent. Many of us go without eating meat and probably don't even realize it. But when a Friday in Lent comes along, Meat seems to be the only thing that we want. Being told that we need to give it up makes it seem as though we can't live without it. This human fascination with hidden knowledge and forbidden fruit helps us to understand what is going on today in the first reading. We are all familiar with how the serpent tempts Adam and Eve to eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. However, one detail we might overlook is the one that the serpent didn't really need to lure Adam and Eve to the tree. They were already there. They probably had already been wondering about it and talking about why God didn't want them to eat its fruit. And so their curiosity drove them to see the tree for themselves, to look at it, and to wonder about it. And because of it, They were basically sitting ducks for the devil's temptation. Like Adam and Eve, there are times when all of us draw dangerously close to sinful situations. These are traditionally called near occasions of sin. For instance, there might be a movie that we know we shouldn't watch, 
but we might say to ourselves, well, I'll just watch the trailer for the movie and see what it's all about. What harm can be there doing that? However, by doing so, we put ourselves within reach of the devil's temptation. Once we watch the trailer, then we decide to view just the beginning of the movie. And then before you know it, we've seen the whole movie. And our imagination then leads us to other dangerous places. Of course, all this could have been avoided if we had not put ourselves in the situation of being tempted in the first place. So it's not enough for us to avoid sinning. We must also avoid those situations that might lead us to be tempted. For instance, instead of wasting time on the internet, we might choose to read a, an uplifting book. Instead of staying out late, we might say goodnight to our friends that we get home at a decent hour because we realize that the longer we stay out, the more likely we might make some bad choices. It might also mean being careful about where we spend time and who we spend time with. These decisions may seem small and insignificant at the time, but they can turn out to make big differences in how our future turns out. There's another thing that the devil goes, does to get Adam and Eve to eat the forbidden fruit. He makes them doubt about God's goodness. Did God really mean what he said? Is God really interested in what's best for you, or is he holding out something from you? Why would God, a good God, deprive you of such delicious fruit? And at the same time, the trick that the devil tries to play on us, he gets us to question ourselves about God, about God's word, about God's church. If we struggle with believing that God has a personal love for us, the devil might try to convince us that God doesn't know or doesn't really care what we do. The devil might also make us question what we've read in the Bible and try to convince us that it means something different than what it says, or that it may not be true for the people, it may be true for the people in the past, but it is not true for people today. Or if we have issues with people in authority, the devil might make us question the right of the church to set rules for us to follow. By sowing doubt in our mind, the devil makes us more susceptible to his temptations. For us to stand up in times of temptation, it is important for us to reflect frequently on the goodness and the love of God. He knows each of us personally, and he loves us unconditionally. He is faithful to us no matter what we do. He is quick to forgive us whenever we fail, and everything he does, he does for our good. When we are faced with temptation, we should stop and take a few minutes to think about the blessings that God has given us. When we have a lively sense of how good God has been to us, sin will seem less appealing. We are all sinful people who we know often fail in our lives. Our hope is in Jesus Christ, who defeated the devil. In him, we also have our victory. We can always turn to him for strength when we are tempted and when we fall. All we have to do is to take advantage of the sacrament of confession to turn to him for forgiveness and healing. God is truly good. His word is truth. And his church is the place where we can learn about him and grow in holiness of life. The closer we draw to Jesus and his church, the further we will be from the devil and the devil's lies. So my friends, as we continue now our journey through this Lenten season, May we strive to draw ever closer to Jesus. May we strive to turn away from temptation and sin and make the positive changes we know that we want to make in our spiritual lives. Amen.
And together now we profess the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Mindful of our many needs this day, we humbly bring them before the Lord our God. For Pope Francis, Bishop Michael Fisher, and all bishops around the world, may the Lord guide them in their mission to bring Christ to all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, may the Holy Spirit guide them in placing the needs of their people before their own. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase of vocations, that more young men and women will respond generously to God's call to serve the church as priests, deacons, and consecrated religious. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who struggle with physical or spiritual hunger, may the Lord provide for them with abundance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community and our quest to grow in service to the Lord, May God give us strength and perseverance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all who have died in the light of faith, may the Lord bring them to the light of eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, you created us out of love and called us to serve you in this world. Hear our prayers we ask through your Son, Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. this water and wine may become to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and God. Lord, wash away my iniquities. Cleanse me from all of my sins. Pray now, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be pleasing and acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by abstaining 40 long days from earthly food, he consecrated his, this fast in the pattern of our Lenten observance, and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal Feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, 
as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy, the religious, and all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And may the peace now enter your hearts and your homes and all with whom you share peace today. Lamb of God, 
you take away the sins of the world. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant, Grant us peace. peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not, not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only, only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Attended Let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and to strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And our prayer now for Father Baker's canonization. Lord, Lord, you, you gave, gave us your, your servant, servant Nelson, Nelson Baker as an example of service to the poor, homeless, and young. By Father Baker's ardent concern for those in need, inflame our hearts and lives with compassion for the poor, justice for the oppressed, hope for the troubled, and courage for those in doubt. We pray through the intercession of Our Lady of Victory, if it be your will, that your servant Nelson Baker may one, one day be canonized. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady of Victory, pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace to glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. <laughs>